All right, so here I am. It's Nick from Variant Edition, and I'm meeting with, you know, Tad Stones, but via the internet. He's in sunny California, and we're in humdrum New Jersey. So, Tad, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Good to be on Variant Edition. Nice. You keep watching the episodes, Tad? Oh, yeah. Now, especially now that they're coming out like gangbusters. Jeez. Exactly. We got, our, we got our stuff down. Now that you've set the new standard of like what ten or twelve a month, we're gonna keep, we're gonna expect <laughs> you to keep that up. <laughs> I hope the fans don't keep asking for more, though. Well, you just have to when you go to cons this time, just stream it. Don't even edit it. Just it'll be a live broadcast, live feed. It's not a bad 24 idea. Twenty-four hours a day. That's not a bad idea. So, Hellboy animated Blood and Iron. We got that coming out today. That's true. And Actually, it was. A, it was originally supposed to come out back in May, um, and the reason why it's not is that Best Buy, who did that cool bust-up promotion that you guys liked, was so thrilled with how that went, they uh, ordered lots more copies of Blood and Iron because they're going to release it with an action figure, and the action figure that comes with DVD is a special variant edition if you will, of a cigar-smoking Hellboy. And as far as I know, that one won't be uh, available any other way, except for, of course, eBay scams. Now, is this like an actual, like, an 8-inch tall action figure that's going to be coming with the DVD? I think it's uh, 7 inches, 6, 7 inches, something like that, fully articulated. Uh, go to the Gentle Giant Studio site, and they're the guys who did both a Hellboy and an Abe, and it's really awesome. Wow. And, I mean, that's just... Me, personally, I like the fact that it's, you know, a cigar-smoking Hellboy. I hope you don't catch any crap from, like, mothers saying, oh, this is a animated movie and kids are watching this and you got this character smoking a cigar, but I think that's awesome well, because that's who he is. Well, yeah, and actually he doesn't smoke in the movies, and I pointed that out, but I said his character does and he does in the movies, and they said they thought that was fine. It's kind of a reverse thing where usually the toy company cleans up your... Uh, project in this case they were you know they wanted to push it a little bit um, I, again that's kind of what we've been in, involved with from the very beginning and that is people just assume because it's animated that Hellboy is just for little kids and all along we just tried to do the comic and Mike writes a PG PG 13 comic so there really wasn't any big problems um, and hey, you know, we were doing DVDs, and when it was shown on Cartoon Network, they chose not to uh, edit anything, which had me scratching my head. Well, I mean, that's good to hear that people are leaving your stuff as is and don't see anything wrong with it. So you're saying that the DVD is going to be coming out with an action figure with it, you know, and you said this was Best Buy you can get these at? That's the Best Buy, and then there's some other, I don't know exactly the breakdown, but just uh, like uh, Sword of Storms, uh, there'll be special comics packaged with um, the DVDs, and others will have a, um, a, a digest-sized Weird Tales. And in fact, somebody, and maybe Walmart, I can't swear to it, will have the new Hellboy animated comic packaged with it. Nice. Which features a story written and drawn by me. I, I go to my credit, but it's not there. <laughs> well, it, it, seem, it, it seems nice, Tad. It's fun. It's a it's another variation of Hellboy as Calvin and Hobbes, like I wrote in the uh, first version of uh, Hellboy animated. This time he goes off on the Lobster Johnson comic book. Uh, Mike is the one who battered me into drawing it myself, and I said, "Okay, okay, if you get me a good inker." And he goes, "Oh no, you got to ink it yourself." Well, <laughs> sorry to subject you to it, but uh, it's a decent first. I didn't cringe too much when I actually saw it in print, largely thanks to the fantastic colors and all. But Dark Horse did a great job of putting out this book, and uh, it's just neat to see that the Hellboy animated stuff can not only spread, but feed into the regular Hellboy universe. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's a great idea of what you did with the last story of Hellboy as a kid living on the Air Force Base, and the fact that you're doing more stories like that. I mean, I thought that was a really, really good idea. I mean, we've seen Hellboy face monsters and demons before, but we never saw him before the BPRD, and I think that's great. Oh, that uh, Mike was excited about doing it, and in fact, in our third film, there's actually a sequence of that, and which led us, as everything we do, into discussion of possible future movies. And we talked about setting one in the Southwest, uh, perhaps with Navajo culture or Hopi culture, 
and you know Hellboy grew up on an Air Force base in New Mexico, so it's really an untapped side of Hellboy. Mike's got lots of Hellboy projects coming out this year, from Lobster Johnson, a and miniseries, uh, and a BPRD series that goes into the early days of the BPRD, but he still hasn't touched that young Hellboy, and I think there's a lot of appeal uh, to that character. So the DVD's coming out with a figure, so what other kind of goodies do you guys have pumping out you know, to coincide with either just any of the Hellboy animated films or Blood and Iron in particular? Well, you know, the Dark Horse has been a great supporter of, of the project, and uh, one of the most exciting things for me was to see them coming up with a merchandising line. Uh, there's bus of Hellboy Abe, and there's going uh, currently out, and there's also going to be a bust of uh, Liz Sherman and even Kate Corrigan. And uh, Selma Blair was really excited about the PVC figures of uh, Liz Sherman and the bust because she says, oh, usually the boys are the ones who get the action figures, and she was happy to finally have some merchandise of her character. Nice. That's good to hear, you know, the person who's contributing to the character is pleased with the work that you guys are doing. That's always a plus. Yeah, I think that, you know, that's a tribute to Guillermo's uh, first movie, how much the actors got into those characters and how much they wanted to return to them. And, of course, right now, even as we speak, they started filming Hellboy 2 in uh, Budapest. Oh, well, that's awesome. So right now there's, like, another Hellboy movie in the works, like, in production or pre-production? In production by wow. now. It's Hellboy and the Golden Army, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that one because we try to, as you can see in our animated DVDs, that uh, Sword of Storms and Blood and Iron are two completely different fields of movies. And I think that's what Guillermo is doing with his movies, too, because the first one didn't have that folklore side of Hellboy that, to me, is at its heart. Uh, and basically, the second one takes off on that. that. Basically, yeah, mankind has been pushing the magical land of fairies and whatnot out of human, you know, out of the world. And, uh, you know, the gist of the story that he and Mike came up with was what if they didn't want to go. <laughs> what if there's a leader that rises up and he's got an atom bomb or the equivalent of it? Wow. Uh, and maybe he says, maybe the humans ought to go. You know, maybe we could kill them all and then we take over. So, man, I'm going nuts. Yeah, that, for that, that one. I, I, from what you just told me, that sounds like it's going to be one great movie. Not like we didn't think it wasn't going to be, but with that little synopsis you just gave me, that sounds awesome. Oh, I just was watching the uh, DVD extras of Pan's Labyrinth, oh. which is Guillermo's masterpiece. Oh, yeah. And man, when you start seeing that stuff, uh, that's a lot of the same material that they're going to be covering in Hellboy 2. And I'm just, you know, this is the one we've been waiting for. And Universal is, is uh, you know, they're not hiding it. It's not coming out in a weird time of year. It's a summer release. And I know uh, some people over there, I don't know that this is a guaranteed thing, but they're, uh, you know, designing an attraction, like a walkthrough attraction for the parks. So they're treating Hellboy as a huge deal, which hopefully will help us in our, you know, in our continuing efforts to do more Hellboy animation. So does that mean that, like, your little dream of a kid wanting his picture taken with Rasputin might come true? <laughs> Actually, I suppose so. He, you know, he'll be standing next to the Incredible Hulk, maybe, instead of uh, Mickey Mouse, but yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's, <laughs> that sounds great. It sounds like Hellboy's really picking up. And this just came to mind. What do you think, I mean, he's had the first movie, which was a big success. The line of comics, which is you know, had a, a huge fan following. The animated films, which are doing quite well. The, the different comic series that they've been having with that. What do you think is the big appeal of Hellboy and the storyline for, you know, comic readers or just moviegoers or people in general? I just think there's a, the character's a unique mix. Um, he's a little bit superhero. There's certainly a supernatural and occult feel to him. Uh, and there's also this basically pulp kind of feeling to him. It's, uh, you know, it's a little bit Indiana Jones, it's uh, as well as, you know, superhero, and just, you know, you throw in, oh, and the world may end, too. It's just got a epic scale built into it, and I think at the core is the guy 
who you're expecting to save the world is like a plumber or a carpenter. You know, it's I'm doing my job. You know, Hellboy always sells himself short, or, or at least you know doesn't take a. He's not in it for the glory, certainly. Uh, it's just a great character who just you know is the guy who says, "Ah, oh, roll up the sleeves," and you know dive in. You know, he's got that moment of, "Oh crap, that's that's a big giant," <laughs> you know, and then he goes and attacks him, you know, and just you know beats the crap out of him. Nice. So <clears throat> we've we've talked about you know the the next live action Hellboy movie. What can you tell us about the next animated film? Well, one, it depends on the sales of the. Well, second I mean, we, we've all film. heard that, but I mean, I think we're all pretty sure yeah. that that's going to be. Hey, you can't say too much until you've all bought five copies. Um, no, it's they paid for a script. The script is finished. It's right here on my desk. Look, Woo! nice. It's a biggie. So um, that's done, and uh, you know we're just awaiting some sales figures, and hopefully it gets a go ahead. Like I said, the Hellboy movies are all different. So the first one was Japanese folklore. The second one, definitely Central European, and a feeling of you know the vampires and werewolves, witches and ghosts. Uh, the third one is the mad scientist pulp side of Hellboy. Rasputin returns. We have uh, Herman von Klempt who uh, you would know as the floating head in a jar. And along with Von Klimt, you have uh, the cyborg uh, gorillas and the uh, zombie army. And, uh, you know, we throw in young Hellboy and some giant crab monsters just to kick things off. Uh, I think what a lot of fans are most excited about is um, Mike, of course, created his own 30s, 40s era uh, pulp adventure hero in the same form as the shadow or the spider, and that's Lobster Johnson. And uh, Lobster Johnson makes a big appearance and is in is throughout the movie. Of uh, in fact, the movie is called Hellboy: The Phantom Claw. Wow. And I mean that, that's if that doesn't get fans' attention because I know a, there's a, a lot of good fan reaction to Lobster Johnson. He's got like I was kind of like the cult character out of the Hellboy characters, and. Uh, well, exactly. I mean, having him included into your next animated film, that just seems like now you're targeting everybody in the Hellboy genre. Like, there's something for all the fans in that now. Yeah, and the, the third one also has, um, it's the animated version of his origin is in it, which is pretty much the comic origin, but we tweak the details, much like Guillermo tweaked them in the live-action movie. Um, you know, people play slightly different roles. It's... Uh, you know, also really talks about the right hand of doom, which is, you know, at the core of the Hellboy mythos. And it's a new plan by Rasputin to uh, bring about the end of the world. Uh, within that, you also, you know, we create a new villain uh, that you haven't seen before. That's, I guess, why he's called a new villain, uh, which is a demon, a new demon we have not seen that, uh, you know, basically creates lots of trouble for Hellboy, and it all revolves around that right hand of doom. Sounds, that sounds really great, and I mean, you know, you joked before about, you know, oh, we, we well, everybody goes out and buys five DVDs, but I think I might just do that, just to really, really ensure the fact that, you know, you guys will make that movie, because that alone, that's like, you know, that's I, something that all Hellboy fans are yeah, looking I don't, for. You know, it's become a running gag whenever I do an interview or a podcast, I do this you know, pitiful pleading, <laughs> but I don't get a piece of the action on these films, you know, I'm not going to make one cent more, I'm just dying to at least do this third one, you know, it, uh, because there's a learning curve in this one. The first two movies were done back to back, and Blood and Iron, I think, is a better movie than A Sword of Storms, although Sword of Storms had some great stuff in it. Uh, Blood and Iron is a single story, it's not episodic, it I think is closer to the feeling of the Hellboy comics, so that excited me about it. But the learning curve was, you know, they, those things overlapped. So it was just a matter of weeks. It's kind of like as you're racing to draw stuff and type stuff and looking at colors, you're going, oh, I guess that kind of worked. We ought to do that in the <laughs> next one. Okay. Uh, we're now some time's gone by. We've had, you know, fan response. Uh, we've gotten some distance on it. Um, so as we play out certain beats, you know, we know this is what worked, or this is what 
to avoid, um, you know, just how you tell the story. You know, there are places where I think we have to be a little farther from the comics, and then lots of ways where, oh, we could have gone much closer, and here's a different way of capturing that kind of classic Mignola beat. You know, I'm just anxious to get in again. It's been such a fantastic experience. <laughs> You know, there's nothing better than brainstorming with Mike Mignola, uh, and that's, you know, at least I had the fun of that working on the, the third movie. Um, let's hope we can take it to the artists after that. Oh, and also, of course, on the DVD is um, an extra. We animated the story of the Iron Shoes. That's never been on TV. It's, you know, hasn't been on uh, Cartoon Network. So, uh, it's, you know, we try to give fans a little something extra when they buy the DVD. Aside from that, we've got some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, and I think it was nice to see the fan reaction to the commentaries. And that's uh, really because I suck at doing the everything I've done is wonderful <laughs> kind of shtick that you hear in a lot of DVDs. Uh, and we talk about, oh, you see how I did that? And, and how we played that there? Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. We, we should have done it differently. You know? And you get to hear that. you know. At one point, Mike goes silent because he's actually watching the movie for the first time. It's like, hey, yeah, it's going well. <laughs> so, you know, Vic Cook is also on the commentary, who is the director, and he had been dying to work on an action series uh, or an action project like this. But what was cool is that Hellboy didn't let you didn't let him fall back on the typical superhero stuff. I mean, we all love, you know, the Bruce Timm world of the Warner Brothers superheroes. And uh, we used some of those storyboard guys working on our projects. But they weren't, you know, Hellboy isn't an agile character like Batman, per se. Uh, it can't leap around and, you know, it's, it's a whole different feeling of action. Uh, so it was neat to see Vic really cut loose and yet not be able to fall back on, oh, yeah, I know how to do that. It's like, oh, no, i got to get that feeling, but... Now they're fighting in a hallway that's only four feet wide, <laughs> yeah. or you know, you know, <clears throat> going to use an antler as a weapon or something. You know, it's just you know, Hellboy lives in a messier world than yeah. most superheroes. Well, it sounds like everything for Hellboy has pretty much been going great. From you know what we're hearing from you, from message boards and everything else. I mean, it's been really great to see Hellboy come from like this really indie comic to a comic with a strong fan following to now a major motion picture and now two animated films in the can with possibly a third one coming out. I mean, things seem to be looking up for Hellboy. Uh, I think, you know, this is a fantastic year for him. Again, you know, as you can tell, I'm a fan, so I'm excited about all the stuff coming out from Dark Horse, and they've got all sorts of projects coming out this year. They'll feed right into Guillermo's movie, and, you know, they've always talked three movies, so let's hope that, you know, that movie you know, build the momentum and, you know, Guillermo gets to do another one too. So, uh, I don't know. I think it's it's really cool that the movies, uh, the, the original movie and the animated movies uh, brought people Oh, yeah, definitely. Comics. You know, we've got, I mean, it's anecdotal evidence. Uh, it's hard to look in the sales figures and figure it out because Hellboy's available in Borders bookstores and Barnes and & Noble and things like that. You know, it's not like it's a monthly series that goes up and down. Um, but still, I mean, uh, it's great seeing kids who saw the movie walk in and, you know, pick up some of the trade yeah. paper. I mean, that, that happens for pretty much any comic book movie that's made, but I mean, that's great to get, you know, people who saw that, hey, this was in, like, you know, pen and ink first. I want to see what that was like. Yeah, exactly. And, and to me, the uh, comic does not disappoint. You really go in there and say, wow, this is a different experience, and this has got some stuff that couldn't be covered in a, you know, a two-hour movie or something. But, I mean, the project's been fantastic for me to, to work on. Um, Mike really, seeing how he approaches his own work was pretty awesome. I don't mean standing over his shoulder watching him draw, because <laughs> you'd never do that. Uh, but he's so, he, he turns out these pieces of art. And he's so self-conscious about it. He beats himself up about it. There may be like 30 seconds where he goes, wow, that's pretty good. Oh, crap, but look at this. <laughs> oh, hell, I should have drawn this, you know? And he, he'll do like covers over two or three times if Scott Alley didn't like, you know, come down and wrestle him out <laughs> of his hands. 
Um, and just to hear the standards he goes to, and, and it's it's not just that that sort of thing. It's you know he's drawn this character so many times. He says, I have to find a new thing to do with covers. And just to hear that as a you know him talk as an artist about setting your sights higher, it you know made me rethink some of the stuff I do in my own career. And uh, you know as I dabble in comics among other things, it's like yeah, you can just put a bunch of stuff together and tell a story, or you make the story about something, and you you, know, you reach and you know what the best comic artists and writers do, and that is to make it art, to make it literature. And I just think you know this is an exciting time for comics in general, and uh, I think Mike's at the forefront of that. I, I, I mean, I would definitely have to agree with you with that. But uh, we're going to have to cut this short a bit. We're kind of strapped for time, but. Uh, it, it was Not really great. Problem. Oh, it was it's great talking talk to you. Thanks guys. for all the information that you filled us in on. I mean, from the two bits from what you told me about the next animated film to the next major motion picture, those sound like some dynamite projects. Hey, and I know you guys criticized that the uh, T-shirts that we gave we out didn't in criticize. New York we, we, had the we, left we hand only of doom. passed comment on it. Guys, I just figured you of all people would appreciate. The variant oh, edition. Oh, we do. We definitely do, Tad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for thanks All for right. talking with us, and uh, we'll see you around. Okay. All right. I'll be take it easy. You. <laughs> On the net. Okay. Bye. All right.